Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on my website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free. Jared Poling Fronos Photo dot com and this is a review of Tamron's 17 to 70 2.8 lens. Now what's interesting about this lens is that at 17 it's 2.8 and at 70 it's 2.8. This is a 25 and a half to 105 millimeter equivalent if you were on a full frame body. Now this lens is designed just for Sony E mount cameras, but with the cropped sensor. So we're talking the A6000 series, the A5000 series. This lens is built for this. It's not built for the full frame bodies. Now what I did with this lens is I took it out into the real world to photograph a friend of mine who makes jewelry because I could shoot it at 17. I could shoot it at 70. It wasn't the greatest lighting situation in the world, but I had the 2.8 and that allowed me to open up the aperture to 2.8 to let more light in and get what I think are some fantastic results. But let's take a walk around the outside of the lens. Right here, this is it. This is the lens hood. It's, you know, it's plastic. It's nothing special. The build quality of this lens feels okay. It's not the best feeling thing in the world. It feels like plastic. I mean, that's exactly what it is. It's not going to blow you away with build quality, but it doesn't also feel like it's the worst thing since sliced bread. It actually is fine. Now we have a 67 millimeter lens cap, which means we have a 67 millimeter filter thread. For anybody just starting out, the biggest question that I get all the time is, should I put a protection filter on the front of it? And generally my answer is, is no. I'm not a big fan of UV filters. Back in the day, sure. Today, I don't do it. Now, if you're doing something where you think you might bang the lens into something or you're not very careful, then sure. But remember, you want to put a good piece of glass, aka a good filter in front of this lens because the last thing you want to do is have a crappy filter which then degrades the quality of the image that you might be getting from this lens. So how much does it weigh? Pounds? 1.2 pounds or 525 grams, meaning it's kind of feather light. Now there's no buttons or switches on the outside of this lens at all, even though it has VC, which is for their vibration, what is it, Steven? Compensation. Vibration compensation. You control that all inside of the body, but it's nice to have that built in to the lens. Now, like I said earlier, this will not work on a Nikon body. This will not work on a Canon body. It's designed specifically to go on E-mount crop sensor cameras. But now let's jump into some sample images. And I want to remind you that you can download these sample images over on the website as raw files so that you can pixel peep them to decide if you like the quality. And if you like me giving you raw files, can I get a thumbs up, please? Two thumbs up. Well, you can only hit it once because if you hit it twice, it kind of goes away, I think. So please thumb up this video. First image right here. We got the little dog. Hello, little doggy. He's like, hey, Jared, how are you? I'm like, I'm good. How are you? But anyway, this is what you get at 17 millimeters. This is the widest that you get. And it's great because I'm big into environmental portraits. I like to show those wides to establish a scene and at 17 millimeters, you can absolutely do that. And on the next image, I uh, decided to just zoom in on the dog and fill the frame as much as possible. And this time I shot it at 66 millimeters and it is sharp as can be. The good news is with most of these APS-C Sony crop sensor cameras, you have IAF and lock on tracking in there, and that is fantastic. And the autofocus speed seemed fine to me. I didn't really miss anything, not that I was shooting fast moving subjects, but this lens would be perfect out and about for portraits, for landscapes, for kids running around. You're gonna get great results and you have a nice zoom range. Now this is just showing you what a 2.8 can do. I'm focused in here on the measuring tape at 14 inches. I'm used to 14 inches and you can see that and she's out of focus in the background. That's what you get with 2.8. Now Sony does make a lens that is 18 to 105, which let me double check my notes, is a 27 millimeter to 157 equivalent, but it's an F4. You don't gather as much light, which means you need to raise your ISO to compensate for that. And the higher your ISO goes, the more noise and grain you might introduce. I prefer 2.8s all day, but that is a $600 lens versus this being an $800 lens. 
I personally would still go the route of a 2.8 because having a 25 and a half to 105 2.8 would kind of be a dream on a full frame body and I hope somebody does do that. Now in the next shot, I wanted to get closer to what she was doing because she was filing off one of these loops to then put onto the skull that she's gonna fire. You'll see that in just a minute. And I wanted to slow down the shutter speed because a slower shutter speed would allow me to convey that motion where she's sawing like this back and forth until she's able to get it off. And once she gets it off, she can then put it onto the skull in the next image. I'm at 1 30th of a second. I went to F4 this time to give myself a little bit more focused leeway at ISO 125. But you can see it's nice and sharp. Uh, the tones look good for really bad lighting situations. And this one is zoomed all the way out to 70 millimeters. Let me cut in here real quick to show you this image that was taken with a Sony camera and it's gonna be edited with Fropac 2 and kind of a sneak peek of Fropac 3. So let's start off here with Apollo No White Balance. Makes it look good. Bob Ross for People, that's unique. Burnt Sienna, I love how that one looks here. And then we've got Caribbean Creamsicle, which I was blown away when I saw how that looked. But with Fro Pack 3, let's look at two of them. Fifth Element real fast, that looks good. And Capone, yep. That's gonna be pretty cool, but if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself some great starting points, you can check out 15 custom Lightroom presets at fronosphoto.com slash fropack2. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters, and if you decide to pick them up right now, they are still on sale. As long as it's right now, they'll be going off of sale soon, but if you wanna save even more, pick up the Fropack bundle, which is Fropack 1 and Fropack 2. Now, let's get back to the video. Moving on to the next image, I wanted to back up just a little bit and shoot a little wider, but I wanted to use some objects in the foreground to draw me into the subject. The ones in the foreground are out of focus, and then she is nice and in focus. You can see that she's using the thingy to light the torch, like we used to do in school with the Bunsen burner. That, that was always fun to just play with the thing that lit it on fire, it made a spark, and then the Bunsen burner was like Science, I like science class. Colors look good. Um, the camera handles really well. The A6600 handled really well in this situation. Focus nailed the eye time and time again. And here's what I was talking about. This one is at 70 millimeters. We can zoom in on the skull and you can see that the fire is right on the skull's head and she's about to put that on there so it can work as a keychain. Really nice quality here. I could get pretty close and still get things nice and sharp and in focus. And then the next one, 17 millimeters. So we went from 70 to 17, and that gives you the range that you see. Wide to coming in close. What a nice option. So that's just getting the detailed shots, but what about environmental portraits? That's what I did right here. This one is at 25 millimeters, and I just love the framing and the composition. I have her off to the side a little bit. She's not directly in the middle, and I think that that works in this situation. We don't have a lot of great lighting, but with the raw file and being able to tweak it in Lightroom, I think you can get some really nice results. And let's zoom in on her face right here. Her eyes look nice and sharp. ISO was 1600, which is pushing this camera just a little bit, but it looks perfectly fine. I'm really Really happy that I have such versatility with a 17 to 70 zoom that's a straight up 2.8. Environmental portrait now sitting down 17 millimeters to show you the widest part of it. It gives you a nice field of view. Is there a little bit of bowing near the edges and in the middle with some stuff? Sure, there's going to be, but nobody cares. Nobody in the real world is looking at that and being like, hmm, why does it look like that? She looks at this and goes, these are amazing. Can I post them on my Instagram? And I'm like, no. No, I said yes. Go for it. Then, moving on with some more portraits, I thought it would be cool to get pretty close to her up top, kind of like one of those wedding shots that you see where people photograph down on the subject as they're looking up because it brings their eyes out. That's what I did here. And using the IAF, I'm able to get great composition. Just look at this. The face looks good. The eyes look good. The tones look good. Everything about it, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of how it's working out. And I was at 1600 ISO. So if it looks a little soft in certain areas, I blame that on a smaller sensor 
because the 1600 ISO is pushing the limits just a little bit. And then finally, took her outside because the sun was like nice and warm because that's usually what the sun does. It gave this nice warm glow. Her eyes are super sharp. Now we're at 100 ISO at 1 2,000th of a second at 2.8, and that looks really good. Look, at the end of the day, this is an $800 lens. If you have a crop sensor Sony camera, this is that one lens that you can start with that's gonna let you do wide angles. It's gonna let you do portraits. You're gonna be able to do landscapes. You could do action. You could shoot video with it. This is kind of that one lens to rule them all that I wish I had on a full frame body. Now some words of warning. If you feel that you're gonna go up to a full frame body at any time, just know that this lens is not gonna grow with you. You'll have to sell this to somebody else, but it should maintain a good amount of value. So if you paid 800 for it and in a couple years you're able to sell it for five five fifty because you moved to full frame that's not bad at all 2.8 lenses hold their value much better than the f4s or 5.6 or the cheaper lenses so keep that in mind when you are deciding on lenses i can fully recommend this because i love the range i love the 2.8 it's gonna help you get fantastic results as long as you know what you're doing let me jump in here real quick and say would you like to take better pictures in 11 days well if you said yes I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Now, let's get back to the video. But now, there's two more important tests that I need to tell you about. We're gonna start with the sniff test. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Mmm, burning incense said no one ever. Boy, do I hate the smell of incense and patchouli oil. I absolutely despise patchouli oil. If you like it, let me know down below and then I'll block you because you shouldn't like petroleum oil, but do your thing. All right, last test, wind tunnel test. This is super important because if it blows off the screen, I mean, and by the screen, I mean the, 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 the counter, we know it's bad. Well, you know that that was a true real wind test because the paper ended up over here. Did it pass the wind tunnel test, Steven? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, Steven says it did, so it did. Don't forget, you can look for our affiliate links down below if you'd like to purchase this lens. You can support our channel by clicking on those links because we get a commission from that and you can know that you helped us continue to make more content like this that helps more people. Thank you guys very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe and download those raw files. Jared Polin, Photo.com. See ya.